Powering Imagination, the words from the Roblox Corporation. Those were the words that caused the death of two test subjects. In 1994, David Bazuki's knowledge revolution was at the height of making history. His ambition drove him to make projects that were considered impossible, or what some would consider unnatural. However, David was still dissatisfied. As much of a genius he was in simulating physics and games, the desire to go beyond that drove him to hire scientists from different parts of the world. After months of an exhaustive search, he finally found two scientists that would help him in creating his ultimate masterpiece. David recruited two people of absolute trust. Their names were Ruby and Lion. He also recruited two more people of absolute trust, one of them being me. We were in charge of making sure to execute protocols if anything were to go wrong. However, the definition of wrong was completely different from everyone on that fateful day. David had laid out the plans to everyone present that day. The procedure was that Ruby and Lion were to be subjected to a special project which would be soon dubbed as the Mind Heist Experiments. A Russian neurologist helped David create a device that would serve as what today is known as virtual reality. However, the early headset was much different. The design had needles that were inserted to certain nerves in the subject's head and spine. The needles were placed in certain places around the back of the head and near the spine. In order for the subject to be quote-unquote paralyzed, in theory, this would fool the brain, thinking it could still move and those movements would be transferred to a virtual world. Thus the name, Mind Heist. Test subject Ruby was placed on a medical bed and had the VR set first. She would be controlling a character named Jane Doe. According to the Canadian psychologist Field Notes, Ruby was the most excited of them all and pleaded to go first. David Bazuki had allowed it but under the condition that she would respond, if anything felt uncomfortable to her, David loaded a server titled Richard Rowe's Place. Richard Rowe was the dependent variable. We were testing how much an AI could mimic human emotion. Once the needles were inserted, test subject Ruby had completely gone limp. Jane Doe had spawned in first. David Bazuki's first question was whether or not she could hear him. The following recorded messages from Ruby followed. I hear you loud and clear, David. It feels so much like a dream. A peaceful one. The room was filled with a silent vibe of excitement. Next came Lion. The same procedure was repeated, and Lion would soon successfully spawn in as John Doe. David Bazuki gave them the reassurance that they could walk away from the experiment at any time, but both pushed forward with the experiment. David had brought in the experiment. User Zero, aka Richard Rowe. John and Jane Doe both looked the same color-wise, but Richard Rowe had a red torso. David made sure that the Canadian psychologist and Russian neurologist kept things monitored and recorded. As he was about to present Richard Rowe to Ruby and Lion, David had specifically ordered for Lion and Ruby to identify themselves as John Doe and Jane Doe, respectively. Richard Doe is an AI capable of understanding human emotions and even mimicking the current emotion the user is in at the very moment. If the experiment were to be successful, Richard Doe would be implemented in one of David Bazuki's future games. Everything seemed great, but Richard Doe had a fatal flaw. The design of the VR headset connected to the limbic system and Ruby at the time suffered from a situational depression. Lion, on the other hand, was a perfectionist. It is unknown whether or not David knew about Ruby's mental state, or whether he designed Richard Rowe with that in mind. The following recorded conversation ensued between John Doe and Jane Doe. Hello, I am Richard Rowe. Hello there, Richard. My name is Jane Doe. And I'm John Doe. Hello, Jane. John. Welcome to my place. This all feels like a dream. What is a dream? Are we sure we're not accidentally going to make this AI question its reality? David Bazuki had given the go-ahead against the Canadian psychologist's better judgment. 
and the test continued. What is your purpose, Richard Rowe? My purpose. The eerie pause caused silence in the room, in an already intense environment. I bring happiness to players who join. Will you come to stay to play? Of course, we will. Richard Rowe had generated what would soon be called a Dominus. This early prototype Dominus allowed Richard Rowe to create anything he wanted. Richard Rowe had generated a playground, a set of three swings, and one slide. After almost an hour, it seemed that the experiment would be a success. The AI enjoyed its time with Ruby and Lion. Eventually, the AI considered them friends. David had asked to tell the test subjects to prepare an exit procedure. But there was one more thing he wanted to test. A resetting test. David had asked Ruby and Lion to reset their characters to test the respawn. Once told, they reset and their characters fell apart. The AI started getting restless, asking where they'd both gone, displaying fear and sorrow. The Russian neurologist noted how fast and realistic the AI had learned emotions. Once test subjects John and Jane Doe respond, the AI showed happiness once again when they appeared. The following recorded conversation ensued. What happened to you, Jane and John? We respond. Is that not in your programming, Richard? What is responding? When you die and reappear in the game. Are you alright, Richard? Is death preventable? What do you mean? We respond. We're here with you. Then why do you feel so sad, Jane? You have intentions to leave. Please, don't go. Um, David, any time now. The Canadian psychologist pleaded with David to stop the experiment. Ruby's depression was being transferred to the AI. Richard Rowe was unable to comprehend that an outside world exists, and the AI was in a simulation. Richard Rowe was connected to the internet, so it had the freedom of curiosity. It was also able to access employee archives and files. However, David had prepared for the worst, and erased the names of Ruby and Lion, so Richard Rowe could only name them by John and Jane Doe. The following argument was made between the test subjects and AI. Jane Doe, thank you. For what, Richard? For being my friend. The strange friendship between us two. Forgive me. If you want to go, then I will let you. But I have the power of the late Dominus to bring you eternal life. I will be the one to destroy death. It knows it's not a real person. Amazing. I will st- Jane Doe's conversation was cut short due to the Russian neurologist overriding and attempting to return consciousness back to the test subjects. They were still in paralysis, but their consciousness was stuck between the real world and the virtual world. The attempt was futile as Richard Rowe hacked the monitoring systems and prevented their consciousness from returning. Unfortunately, the overheating units caused a small explosion and another fire would break the monitoring systems, losing Lion and Ruby forever. David pulled a cord on Richard Rowe's screen and it turned off Richard Rowe's world. Test subjects Lion and Ruby's bodies would still remain in a vegetable state and copies of the experiments were destroyed before the scientific community classified the experiment as unethical. Only one copy remained, and it was the one held by David. He felt it was his fault for creating Richard Rowe and risking the life of his daughter to bring her long-dead friend back to life through Richard Rowe. David would attempt the experiment one more time, only to lose to Richard in a psychological game. David imprisoned the AI in a Mac, leaving dust to feed on it, in hopes that one day his daughter and lion will still be alive.